But think about it. If readers just want puppy dogs, then how can you inform them about the community? So I think we should see this attitude, what readers want are puppy dogs, but we need to inform the community, as the, a relic of a period that is over in news. Once upon a time, the media business was so simple and for the best companies so profitable that the editorial people, the journalists, didn't have to worry about or even know much about the business side of the company. I put the word side in quotes because that's an important metaphor to look at and question. That's, it's like it's a side of the company that you don't have to actually enter. Uh, Jim, you're representing the legacy media here. Daily News, which at one time was a very simple business, a tabloid newspaper. You did news, you got readers, sold those readers to advertisers. On a big news day, people bought a lot of copies. You made a lot of money at one time. Now it's not that simple anymore. So I want to ask you, what is, what is the current business model of the daily news? What did it used to be before this? And what do you need your newsroom to understand about your commercial strategy? Uh, OK, well, <clears throat> first of all, I just want to be on the record to say that I like puppy dogs. <laughs> I, also, I also like being informed. So I think, I'm not going to answer your questions directly yet, there's a way to accomplish both, but I'll put that aside for a second. Um, the daily news business model is, I don't think, is a lot different than what it's always been. And I know that that sounds sort of idiotic on its, on its, on its face. We're looking for as, as many eyeballs as we can get. They used to come in the, in the form of newsstand sales. Uh, but, you know, you, you talk about that wall. I've always thought that the wall was a bit of an illusion because what, okay, let's, let's try to harken back in our encyclopedias uh, to before the internet existed. What was the metric that, that media companies used? Newspapers, forget television for a second. It was circulation. Circulation number is the equivalent of what your unique visitors or page views is right now. A much more rudimentary number and less accurate, but everything about the business was driven toward that number. If that number started to go down, well, there was a lot more pressure in the newsroom. Your city hall reporter wasn't quite as worried about it on a day-to-day -day basis, but once the city hall reporter started getting the pressure from the editor or the bureau chief about the circulation numbers, which is the pressure they had gotten from the editor-in-chief who got it from the publisher, suddenly that trickled down to, oh, we better do something to change you know, how we're performing here. Now, that comes with gathering better news, more exclusive news, writing a better lead. Uh, again, tabloids were clickbait before clickbait existed. The page one, and we've proven that in the last year, it still is clickbait. And to me, it's about attracting an audience. We're just using different platforms. You're still trying to write the best headline. You're still trying to write the best lead. You're tr still trying to get the angle on the story that nobody else has because that's what's going to inspire people or motivate people to come to your site or to your social media account or to, God forbid, the newsstand and actually buy a newspaper. Mm -hmm. and, and Traditionally, it's always been that one product, whether it's your website or your print paper. And editors take care of the content. Business side takes care of the selling and the advertising. And uh, they work separately, the wall that you talked about. But now, as with Quartz, what we do is that we think more holistically. It's not one person's job to sell and not one person's job to create the content. How? Do, what's, the, what's the kind of what do we do best and how can we sell it best? That should be a collective problem. Oh, it's Quartz is interesting. Traditionally, if you go on the internet, uh, what you see are these banner ads that are everywhere, little boxes on the side, little boxes on the top, and you know, some sort of box in the middle now. So we don't do any of that. All our advertising is custom and na native. We make our own advertising in-house. We go to advertisers and say, hey, if you want to advertise with us, just give your assets and we will build the ads for you. All our advertising units are custom, which means that they have been created exclusively for Quartz. The product team does that. And we know what works. We know what the user experience is, so we're not just sticking boxes all over our website. Um, and then, you know, it is a little bit of a shock, I think, when you get into 
um, you know, the the workplace, especially in 2008, which was, um, you know, the year after I graduated college, which was not a very good year in, journal in journalism. I think all of you guys um, could identify with that. And suddenly, you know, the business interests became bigger than you could possibly imagine. And um, not being primed for that, not understanding how to navigate um, what you learn in journalism school with what businesses wanted and creating a great product out of that was something that was a huge challenge for everybody. And I, I think it was very difficult. We came out the other side, which is great. Um, and journalism is better for it, I believe. But um, at the time, it is one of those things that, you know, now I know why they do now teach it at Medill, which is, which is really good. And I'm really glad that they are because it is so important. I think it, it challenges us to think a little bit more creatively, at least at, you know, Bustle. You know, I think what a lot of um, clients want is, is premium product. They want something that's really cool, something they've never seen before. And that gives us a unique opportunity to present our content in a way that we had never thought we could present content. So, um, you know, working with a product team to figure out, is there a cool way to build an interactive feature that shares the information with an audience that still gets them the information that they would get in a normal written through story, but in a way that's that much more engaging that they soak it in that much better. Um, so I, I think that's been a great way to be able to play off of what business interests are, but still be able to improve the experience, not only for your reader, but for yourself too. Going to put, if you're posting stories on Facebook and that pretty much every publisher and a huge percentage of publisher traffic is coming via Facebook or uh, Google, you have to find what works for your brand and for your readership. For instance, with Quartz, we can possibly do something Again, sorry, <laughs> millennial woman, because that's just not our readership. Our readership is more looking for global and sort of, you know, business news kind of thing. They're looking for a smart spin on the day's events. And uh, yes, that means that some, you know, it becomes harder to pitch to quads. And I've heard this from a lot of PR people that it's very hard to pitch to quads because they don't know what. And one more thing is with quads, we've done away with beats. That used to be a traditional way of PR pitching. You know, you rent to the beat reporter for whatever it was and pitched we don't have beats for our reporters we have something called obsessions where somebody obsesses about a particular topic and that obsession doesn't have to be permanent uh, just like obsessions never are so you obsess about it for six months you obsess it about for a year sometimes you obsess it about over it for just three months you know and then you kind of talk go on to another topic and you know cover that deeply so so that makes pr pitching very hard but it's just the nature of the business. It's changed because we now know who our readership is. We now have a very strong sense of brand identity. What is a quad story? Every reporter, every editor, every salesperson in our company knows what's a quad story, you know? And uh, and having, and it's just something that's the new reality to work with. Excellent answer. As, and you know, <clears throat> the part of the evolution for, at a legacy uh, publication is there are positions that exist in the newsroom now that would you, if we have gone back in the time machine and said, oh, where's your head of optimization? They would have looked at you like you were yeah. drunk, which well, you very well might have been at that time. Yeah. Um, but uh, so head of optimization, uh, editorial director, uh, chief uh, creative officer, all of these positions and people who fill them are, are working, again, in very similar uh, collaborative fashion with every every aspect of the company. Um, you know, business side, uh, advertising, uh, product development, uh, tech, so, and then of course editorial, uh, which creates, you know, interactions that five years ago wouldn't have, would have never happened at a place like the to, Daily News. Yeah, to Jim's point, my job didn't exist two years ago. Quartz created that position two years ago when they saw that there was a need for someone who kind of understood editorial, could work with an editorial and product and uh, right. everything else. So this this is like, you know, right. newsrooms are So just one way the wall has disappeared is that there are all these new people whose job it is to cross that, those divides, right? Mm -hmm. And and yes. perform functions that didn't really exist before. Right. I would, and the one, the one thing I would just add, the caveat I would add to that, as far as how that applies to at least the daily news, but I think to similar legacy newsrooms at this moment in time, is that, yes, so that wall has, has been taken down. And I don't want to say that a separate wall has been created, but there is going to be, as I, and I talked about a little earlier, there are going to be certain topics where 
there's not going to be any pushback at all or any queasiness when it comes to exactly what we were just talking about, which is, okay, how can this content be adapted or tweaked in order to be put against a, a, a higher cell, right? Or a cell at all. And then there are gonna be other things we do as far as the, you know, again, the more traditional nuts and bolts, you know, city hall investigative sort of work where if advertising came to us and said, hey, you know, this would really, really sell great if you guys just did this, that, mm -hmm. or the other, or didn't do X, Y, or Z, we're probably gonna balk at that at that, yeah. at that point. But again, it, we're talking a little bit about an apple and an orange, and, and the Daily News, we're, there, is a, there is a moment where we're attempting to be all things to all people uh, editorially, and then on, on the flip side, as far as, as, far as uh, the business end of it goes as well.